Well, actually, did, did, did you see that thing with the Argentinian minister on Zoom? No, no. no. What was that? Okay, that's 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 when you have to look up because I can't I can't describe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's made the news. It's easy to Google. Right. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> thing, look up. Look up. I'm looking up. I know. Like, we all sort of like that. <laughs> right, everybody. Welcome back to another bite size webinar. We were absent last week. We are back, and as you can see, I have the regular duo on the panel: Carl Horton, Will Murphy. And this evening, I'm pleased to say that we are joined with by the fantastic Danny and Steve from DSD. Hi, boys. Yeah. Hi there. Okay. Thank you very, very much for joining us this evening. We're all really excited to have a chat with you. I think I will go easy on the boys and I'm going to interrogate Mr. Murphy first. Mr. Murphy, tell us how your week has been. Uh, my week has been good. Where am I? Oh, I've lost. Where, where's everybody gone? Your marbles. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my marbles. You disappeared off screen because somebody's trying to call. We can me. all see. We can there, all see you. You. there you <laughs> are. Uh, it, it feels like I haven't had a weekend because we went. I went straight uh, from finishing my week's work to tutoring on the FGDP implant diploma course. So it was right? went very well, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's it's obviously been pretty heavily interrupted. But um, and we moved venue, you know, we've been a little bit nomadic because um, once upon a time it used to be uh, held at the Royal College of Surgeons in central London, which was very nice to swan around there. But then they're, they're refurbing the whole place. So then we moved down to uh, to George's and then for the last unit, actually, we were over in Kings, which is sort of Denmark Hill over that way. So anyway, the facility is great. We were doing lots of practicals on um, sinus lifting and block grafting. So it was good. Yeah, pretty full weekend. And we were able to get out and about, you know, in, in London a little bit. Obviously, things have changed quite a lot now. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was good. I think the, the cohort's got one more unit. So that's supposed to be later on in the month. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out. Mm. But I think the educational facility is fine. Uh, it, it sort of lends itself well to, you know, education and social distancing. So that'll be the last one. And then some of the lucky cohort are going to do their exams. Ooh. Ooh. And then it was back to work on Monday. And, you know, more, <laughs> you know, you just you do feel a little bit robbed of your weekend. You know, normally <laughs> I like to have a, a bike ride and a couple of beers and a glass of wine and, and you know, just sort of relax a little bit. So it was just straight back into it, you know, more of the same, more implants, so, more surgery. So look out this weekend then. Is that what you're saying in the Murphy this household? This weekend, yes. <laughs> I've bought new wheels for my bike and I'm going to give them a test run tomorrow hey. morning. Yeah. Oh, good man. Good what man. You got? What wheels have you got? Uh, I've decided to go carbon and oh. tubeless. So Ooh. They're, yeah, a bit like a sort of car tyre. So there's no in a tube. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. We'll give it a go. I'll probably have a puncture within five minutes. And <laughs> <laughs> the stranded roadside. So have you seen me roadside, anyone? I come and pick you up. <laughs> just, uh, just put a beacon on my on my Strava. I'll, I'll run past you and help you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Most kind. So, Will, with the um, up and coming exams, how do you think that will take place? What sort of format do you think? Yeah, it might it, like? it's it's a good point, Kate. It's going to be online, actually. So normally the, the format would be a, a Viva presentation um, mm. where you present your cases. So the candidates uh, have four cases that they've done themselves and we've taken them through every stage. So they have to tick off things like a full arch or a, and a bridge in an aesthetic case and a another case. Um, and then there's some unseen cases that they'll have to do. So they'll be presented with some x-rays or some scans. Uh, given a certain amount of time to look them over and then they'll just get some sort of routine questioning just to just to check that they can treatment plan just know all the basics you know on, yeah. on the hoof really yeah. um, but but during the two years they've been assessed on their practicals they've probably had about 15 assignments to do so it covers a real broad span yeah ticks, ticks all the boxes 
Fantastic. And Mr. Horton, how's your week been? Same as Will's, but just <laughs> slightly, slightly different. So, yeah. Was it a Saturday and a Sunday? Did you do both Saturday and Sunday? Yeah, I thought you'd had it a bit harder. Yeah, it was the fall. I was sat, sat there Sunday thinking, oh, poor Will. <laughs> uh, but, he's, but, he's there in a, in a plume of... Uh, pigs to your dust you know uh yeah we i mean it was it was a, funny enough it was the same on saturday we were doing the west midlands one on the fresh cadavers oh, but, yeah. um but not 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 the advanced course so it was the uh sutures and flat design and uh placing a couple of implants and just getting the real basics sorted out oh, nice. but that, that was that was sort of interesting the the lengths that they've had to go through to allow us to do the course so it was uh, respirators, um, and I'm not knocking the people that are trying to run the course. Yeah. But the they've had that insistence from the university because those cadavers can pass on COVID. But they, they've they've actually been COVID tested the cadavers really? and and everything else. So it was it was, but it's great. It's such a good day. I I, I get a big yeah. buzz out of it. I'm sure you do too. This I do. Time. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I abs absolutely love it, and I, I I get a bit jealous because I want to get in there and. <laughs> do a little bit of work myself, um, you know, which is it's not the idea of the day, is it? It's supposed to be helping these guys along. <laughs> yeah. Um, Where, where's the venue? Uh, West Midlands um, Teach Centre, Coventry, Walsgrave Hospital at the university oh. side on there. Uh, so it's, it, I mean, it's it's a fantastic venue. Uh, they've got all the facilities, the cameras, the microphones. Uh, but at the moment, unless you ask, you can't video things. Uh, yeah. With, you know, with because of the identification aspects mm. and consent. Yeah. Uh, but if you if you ask them in the first place, they'll set their all up. Uh, but it's good again, social distancing and all that sort of stuff. Uh, mm. So just making sure that everybody was safe, doing it in a safe environment. Uh, and I, and I, the feedback's really good. I, I mean, I like that centre. I think they've got it. They've got yeah. it done quite nicely. Well, oh, good. Uh, so that was that. We had a, an immediate loaded case uh, last week. Uh, okay. which we've been building up to. So that took a bit of organizing as well, just getting everybody on board. And that went, uh, that went well. Some new techniques. Was that got a follow up? Got, yeah, I've got a question for you actually, Will. Got a little <laughs> question for you. I've been told, I've been told that scrub brushes are not, no longer that effective and actually you should be just washing your hands with either soap and water or hibis scrub. And that was is that something that you do or you don't are you using scrub brushes or a bit of both or whatever you've got on stock or <laughs> do you of... wash your hands yes yeah. you wash on your the hands. occasion yes i do on now and again <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do you know what in some some of the venues they have little uh, individual brushes uh, with a bit of sponge on one side and a bit of nail brush on the other and in others, I just wash my hands as normal. I, I, I think by and large, and I've heard cases for and against. Yeah, haven't they? Yeah. Whether the actual scrubbing with a brush on the skin can bring whatever out to the surface. I believe that that, that was an argument I heard about it. So, um, yeah, I don't know whether there's any hard and fast rules on it, is there? No, no. I just thought I'd ask you and, and see what your your thoughts yeah. were. Well, see, see, I, I, see how I dodge it and kind of. Yeah. You know, <laughs> do you know what? Very good. Fudge I, over the whole thing. My response was as political as yours. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't quite like Trump. Uh, <laughs> it's it's false. It's to, it's totally false. It's, adequate, it's corrupt. Corrupt. I, I shouldn't go down that road, should I? Yeah. yeah. Let's, leave, let's leave the politics. Yes. Yeah. So Steve and Danny. I, I actually uh, text Will this week and I think actually I have formed a boy band because <laughs> my text to Will was, we've got the DSD boys. Yeah. And when I reread my text, I thought, sounds like a boy band, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> sing, us, sing us a song, lads. Come on. It's like an audition. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I know it, you are part of a fantastic team because obviously we got uh, the other people working with you. And I want to do a shout out to Dave, obviously, who I speak to. But boys, honestly, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we were hoping you could give us some kind of insight into obviously what you guys do on a daily basis to help these two implantologists with um, their lab work. 
Will, I don't know if you do use DSD, but what I'm actually meaning by this is that these guys obviously place implants. I want you guys to tell everybody that's listening your part in the process of restoring implants. And also, if you could give us an insight of what um, lockdown meant for you guys. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah well, obviously we're DSD. Um, DSD stands for Dave, Steve and Danny. Um, I know they got DSD as a, the digital small design, but um, we didn't rob it from there. I <laughs> um, they haven't sued you yet. No, they haven't yet, no. I don't think they've heard of us yet. We keep going. <laughs> <laughs> We're based in Birmingham in the Jewelry Quarter. Um, we've been this premises for about five years now. It's our fifth year, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And um, but Steve's obviously been doing the job twenty nine years. I've been doing it seventeen years. Um, and we we set up this lab to move forward. So obviously we, we do in in house printing. We have two CAD CAM machines. We use Dental Wings and ExoCAD. Um, and then we can uh, obviously receive intraoral scans, which Steve you. Yeah, we, we've scans, received then. from sort of Trios and, um, well, all of them, really. Yeah, it's basically, it, yeah, I tell you, you know, any intraoral scans and you bring them in. And it's it's a new way of working. It's mm -hmm. it's an interesting uh, thing. You know, we, we, we embrace it. There's lots of things to learn digital. One yeah. of the things I'm going to ask you is because sometimes uh, we get patients watching these videos. Yeah. Or not patients necessarily, but people that aren't dentists. Yeah. Um, so when you say you've got the CAD CAM machines and the the intro scanners, I'm just going to I'm going to start basically and let you take over. So what you mean is that when the dentist has a patient that comes in, rather than using the silicon or the putty or the pastes that they used to use, they've got this little camera device that they can take an image of the tooth that's been made ready for a crown or the implant with a little part in it. And then that gets as if by magic emailed to you guys rather than sent through the post and then you guys work your magic by doing what with it what happens then once you get that little email file yeah what well, we get it through an inbox and then basically we put it into our into our system we check that it looks okay everything's all right before we start if there's any issues we can sort of flag it up and say oh there's there's this issue or that issue to you guys uh, generally they, they look pretty good and from that point we form a model we, we design it on screen and um, print, 3D print the model. Um, uh, in terms of the um, dent in digital world, what, what, is you, what we're looking for is clean scans because sometimes you can have doubling or you can have like holes or things like that within it or the scan bodies not being looking correct. And basically, it's a, it's a workflow where the, the system recognizes certain scan bodies scan flows that you put into the mouth and that's what connects our systems with yours and we print the model and then work on it from there i know you use uh you use uh trios yeah how did you find that all right <laughs> uh, yeah actually i uh i i oh i'm gonna tell her. yeah i i i forgot the dongle, which I find a real pain in the backside, because if if it isn't bolted to me, then it tends to be forgotten on occasions. So um, I, I turned up at a practice and I'd forgotten the dongle. Um, I, I like Trump, I blame somebody else. <laughs> somebody else's fault. It's not mine, but it was mine. I'd forgotten the dongle, and so I had to use their Itero machine, so which is another scanner for anybody that's listening, and. Um, I don't like. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. At all. It was very. I'd used it a long time ago, and I find it very clunky, very chunky, and the way that it kind of scans and then says, "Hang on a sec, let me just catch up," and then you scan again, and then it kind of says, "Well, I, yeah, okay, I've got that bit." Whereas with the uh, Trios, I just find it a very smooth sort of scanning process. I think that once you get used to it, you can pick up the errors that you guys have mentioned um, by flicking from color to to mono and. Uh, I think there's one or two cases really early on you guys sort of identify where there was a little bit of an issue and uh, I, I didn't see it until you pointed it out and then I think you kind of 
made me realize some of the errors that were happening on, on some of the scans. If it's wet or if there's a bit of steam on the scanner, you, you get issues or if it doesn't stitch properly. And I think that a lot of that now has been fixed, I think, with the updates they're doing. So, so yeah, I, I actually uh, I can roll out a scan in less time than it takes uh, to do an impression. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just I just find it phenomenally better for the patient and for me. I I don't like taking impressions now, but I mean I was talking there, Will, about the full arch. That's I don't think that for me going digital yet is the right thing to do with the full arch. That's just for me the full arch cases. I don't know uh, about yeah, you. I mean, I mean that's what I hear. Yeah. I mean I'm. It's interesting because I'm sort of digital dinosaur, sort of looking from the just, outside just in dinosaur. Just, or just a dinosaur <laughs> just just old and decrepit but i'm also probably not like one of the you know you get new adopters people who are going to buy the first of everything you know i'm sort of iphone five ish you know so it's kind of like <laughs> that that's my sort of analogy on on where i'll come into the marketplace you know yeah. so in some ways you guys if you were selling it to me from a from a dentist point of view and maybe from the technician's point of view, perhaps you, Carl, sell it to me in terms of like why you wouldn't go back to impressions and things for for smaller arches, for smaller or, I, I or think, smaller segments. For smaller segments, I think, in my opinion, the accuracy is better. Um, so I've I've not had an issue with the accuracy on them at all coming to the fits. Uh, not only with the actual fit um, interproximally, but also occlusally. So I have. Not that I've got many issues with the uh, the silicon impressions. There's a lot of mess, I think, with the silicon impressions, and you just get rid of that. That's that's all gone. I'm not waiting for a perfect mix or anything like that. I don't have to wait for it to set. You've just got the scan. I can look at it there and then, and you can actually magnify it and have a look and see whether you've got any errors on it. I think the communication between the lab is instant, so you're not having to wait for it to be picked up, the post, especially with what's going on these days, and then waiting for it to be cast up and then fed back if there's any issues with it. It's it's almost pretty much within sort of quarter of an hour or half an hour, depending on how quick these guys can get access to, to what you've posted. Uh, but the, the scanning time as well, I think once you've picked up on the scanning time, it's, it's less than it takes for the impression material to be mixed and set in the patient's mouth. I think from a patient point of view as well, it's it's phenomenal because- More comfortable. Yeah, yeah to actually, comfort wise and to actually show them as well. You know, this is what we this is what we're doing when you're doing the uh, consultation, the pre-scan, and then when you're actually scanning as well. Um, so I, I I couldn't go back. I don't think I'd, I wouldn't like to go back at all. For me, it's... And, are you, and are you using it for workups as well? And yeah. are, you, are you merging it in with your CBCT scans? Yeah, I love I love that side of it. So planning wise, it's it's on a different level. So you've got your study casts, you get it on your CBCT, merge them together in the software. So I'm using a combination of, tr I'm trying, if you're listening, 3Shape, I'm trying to use Implant Studio, but uh, okay. hopefully we'll get there. But Code Diagnostics and Blue Sky Plan, so I'm using either of those planning bits of software. And then putting the virtual tooth into the position and then putting the implant onto the CBCT and, and planning it that way. Um, and again, we're looking at going, sort of doing a few guided um, but we oh. talked about that previously. So, yeah, I, I absolutely love it. I'm probably not as late an adopter as you, mate, and I'm, but I'm not an early adopter either. So I kind of just kind of wait a little bit, but I'm probably early-ish adopter maybe. I like uh, that as well, so that ticks a box. And what's the uh, what's the learning curve like? How scan when I'm in surgery, sometimes I'll do the first scan and then I'll pass it to whoever's supporting me and let them do the, the second scan. Not necessarily on uh, where we're changing the scan bodies, but certainly on the patients where we're doing the study casts and things like that, on the nurses that are training up. That's how easy it is. So they actually watch you do your first scan and then they can do the second scan. That's how easy it is to pick it up. Yeah. In terms of sort of picking up the issues that you can get with the actual scan bodies and things like that, as Steve said, I don't think you get many issues. It's it's kind of, it's sort of self-diagnostic in a lot of ways. So if there's a problem, it kind of it kind of tells you there's a big green patch or whatever, or it'll, it, like the software actually say, yeah, you've done that really crap. You need to do that again. And where, where are they? Word. 
<laughs> yeah. It's the, way, it's the way my software speaks to me. It's the way most people speak to me, to be fair. Are there any hidden costs? Hidden costs? Yeah. Are there costs that you didn't anticipate when you, you know, as you get into it, like uh, software costs and all this sort of stuff? No, there's nothing, there's nothing that's hidden. I think the, the scan bodies are, are reasonable. They, they, less, they cost less than the impression posts. Um, so that, that's quite nice. Just make any... sure your nurse looks after the tips. Yeah, that's what you know I would what? say. That, that's the hidden cost. That's the hidden cost. Is eventually the tips wear out and the renewal of the license. Mm. So that's that's another cost you've got to factor in there. So if you if you're looking at these things, look at the the license fees that they're going to charge uh, on an annual basis if they're going to charge a license fee for using that software. That that's the cost. I think you've probably got to be aware of. Yeah. Steve, um, what would you say the um with with the scans that you get through what would you say is the most common error for you guys at your end that you're ringing up clinicians about it, it basically it can come from um where people haven't gone in a in a in a steady motion around so if you they, they don't always give you the tuition if, if you start on one side of the mouth and then the other and then you sort of just go here there and everywhere what happens is that the the system's trying to map the last image with the next one and in a in an exact way and if you move it around all over the shop like a like a magic wand mm. you, you can get some quite mad anomalies in there and holes which if you then send them to us our sort of system can't compute it because there's a lot to, there's too much going on and it that's where problems can arise they're really simple to, to sort yeah. out it's just it's like taking a good impression Taking a good digital scan is exactly the same. It's a skill that you just quickly go, oh, yeah, this is it. And yeah. where you go. But, you know, it's all it is is looking at what you have on the screen. I mean, the good thing about it is it's a big screen, so you can see everything. So if yeah. there are any issues, you can instantly sort of go, oh, yeah, I can kind of see what, what that is. And, I mean, the good thing is when you send it to the lab, if you think I'm a bit not sure about this, what's, you know, what's going on, you can – literally say can you have a look at this now i've got the patient here yeah. and then it comes over instantly so you can sort of instantly get that that thing you haven't got to wait for anything to be cast no that, yeah, that is brilliant you can sort of go oh yeah that, that's bang on that looks brilliant or what i do here is and it sort of closes that gap and you can sort of talk talk about it and it gets you to where you want to be i've got to say steve you are one of the most patient people i think i've met <laughs> because the times that you've rang and we're talking about some of the cases and we might try this or try that scan body the time you take to explain but not just explain you will also point us in the direction of why don't you try this one though and that on i've met some people in my time but you are so patient <laughs> The problem is it's there's so many different scan body systems, all mm. sorts of things to do with it, and it's constantly evolving. It yeah. keeps changing. So you just it is it's difficult when people first start with digital. It's you know, it's just different. It's not mm. hard, it's just different. Mm. It's a new tool. It's yeah. just gotta work with basically. Yes. Say that again, say that again, Dan. It's just a new tool that you basically just gotta learn yeah. about. What do you guys prefer? Do you prefer the digital or the uh the old uh, dinosaur approach. <laughs> obviously, comes into the system and Steve can work straight onto it. And obviously, go back to when you say you do your um, before scans. Basically, we can merge all that information in and say if you did a temporary before and you've scanned that and then you've took um, your pickup impression with your scan, we can actually merge everything together so you can go inside that temporary. So you've got something from the start rather than. You've got to look at a study cast. You've got to maybe take four more cells. You've got to try and put it into a system where you've got to try and wax it up. It's, it's, it is simpler. It is. Have you guys noticed any difference in um, the, uh, I'm sure you don't get many remakes, but, or issues between the digital and the, the sort of the analog impressions, the, the silicon impressions. Have you noticed sort of, is there a difference in the, um, the sort of, if you could say there's a comparison between an impression and a digital, would you say one's more accurate than the other, or you get more issues with the silicon than you do with the digital, or is it the same or just a different issue? No, obviously, I don't think you'd ever have an issue as such with the stone model because obviously it's solid and everything's yeah. solid. You took a good impression. Obviously, the pickup copings, you, you screw them in, you know they're engaged, um, you then pour it in a hard stone, and so you know everything's not going to move, whereas there are slight variables in a digital model because obviously you've got to 
make sure you've put the scan body in place and obviously they're just little PMMI things. Obviously, you yeah, have got some metal feed surface ones, which are a lot better. But if you haven't fitted that PMMI down properly, because that's are some of the issues we've had to do with, haven't we? Where yeah. the, the scan body isn't quite in place, because obviously you can screw it in, but it's, it's not in place, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do, because I've made that mistake. Yeah. So, so yeah. And so you could go all the way to making the crown thinking you've put that implant in the right place and it's not in the right place. Yeah. You have to then also put the analog into the model once it's printed. And it's yeah. the variable again. So, I mean, initially, when we first started, getting digital models correct yeah. took a lot of trial and error. You know, it, it, the analogs going into the, the, you know, it's all settings within the system. At first, you can make the model and you think, oh, this is fine. And then the analog, repositional analog won't sit in at all. You're like, oh, okay. And it's literally trial and error and printing them to get it exactly how you want it to be. And then the workflow works. But like anything that's new, yeah. to begin with, it's actually harder work. Whereas now yeah. we know exactly when things come in, we go, okay, this is the settings for all these things. And it works. But, you know, when you first get your 3D printer, it's not just press the button and away it goes. It, it doesn't work like that. You know, there's loads of times you go, why is it doing this? Why, what's going on? So, so Carl, I'd say digital is better for us now. But okay. When we when it first started, I'd say now yeah. stone models it's because it's easy. We know what we're doing. It's simple. It's just a learning curve. It's all just learning curves. Obviously, you've got to move with the times, and that's that's the way it's going. So, so when you get your digital impression, are you then carrying on with the process of say designing a CAD CAM abutment, yeah. and are you then doing hands-on porcelain work or are you milling porcelain how are you how are you working the final restoration it 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 depends on what the dentist wants you can either have a uh, milled zirconia on a uh, on like a tie base or a custom abutment style uh, if you want uh, a solid zirconia or we do zirconia which is then layered if it's anteriorly and there's lots going on there's there's you know, character that you you know you really want in depth in there, or we do you know all one piece metal ones that are milled and then they're layered. So we, each, every, whenever we get an, an implant crown in, it plays an implant crown. But we tend to have a conversation with that dentist, basically saying, "What is it that you prefer? What do you normally get? What do you like? You know, what are you looking for?" Because it's not sort of one. One implant crown is not equal to another. Yeah. And with all of them, there are ups and downs to every single choice that you make. You know, you can have, as I say, a barrier based crown with the cone you're on, and there'll be no fracturing. But there is the possibility that it could debond. It's very, mm. very, very rare, but it's yeah. that's the downside. Yeah. Where you have an all one piece uh, metal one, which is layered. Obviously, that will never happen. But the interface has been fired. Do you think there's still no substitute, especially with anterior crowns, for good old fashioned, you know, hand eye skill oh, and definitely. porcelain? Yeah, definitely. It looks it looks different. It looks they, they look built in. They look more natural. You know, anteriorly, it, yeah. But zirconias now they've come on miles. They they do look really good back to where they first started doing them. They're all one block colour, weren't they? Yeah. Whereas now you get them in stage, you get sort of tip shade in them, and they do look really nice once they're stained up. But layering porcelain, I don't think you're ever gonna ever gonna beat, so to speak. Mm. Especially if you've got someone as good as Dave. <laughs> hey, go Dave. <laughs> so what was what was it like? What was the effect for you guys during lockdown? You know, when when did you finally reopen? Right, we locked down on the day they said lockdown, wasn't it? it was, yeah. I'm forgetting it's Christmas next month. That was March. <laughs> March. Twenty third of March. March. I finished yeah. a couple of days early because I wasn't yeah. I wasn't very well. I I, I did I went um, particularly well. So um yeah, twenty third of March we yeah. closed down. Yeah. We did close down. And then as soon as dentists could open again, we opened our doors in sort of stages. We wasn't all in here. If no. we said to our customers if they need us, we're here. And so it just it took a couple of weeks for work to start coming back in. Um, and then, yeah, we, we was pretty busy. Obviously, because we're mainly implants and we're private work, a lot of the implants could have bedded in. So that was a good yeah. thing that all these dentists wanted to obviously restore their implants. So that, that was a positive with it. Yeah. Uh, 
But no, apart from affecting us, it's obviously it's tough. It what is tough, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's weird. You know, just not you're so used to this. You know, being busy doing this, that, and the other. Because obviously, no one had been at work for three months. I don't know about you guys, but you suddenly forget how to do your job after three months. Seems <laughs> <laughs> to have found it difficult to do a day's job. Is that correct, boys? Yeah, we were shattered. Yeah, we're still shattered. A couple shattered. of hours, that's it. Oh, yeah. well, he's, he's had a solid couple of weeks. I know. Yeah. I'd You'll be dropping it. off in a minute, Will. I know, it's yeah. Friday. You can see I've cracked the beers open already. So, uh, <laughs> Don't blame you. Don't forgive blame me you. if I start slurring my words and <laughs> Again. try to fight everybody. <laughs> so, I mean, you said, Danny, it was a, a, a couple of weeks um, since the work started to return. I mean, really, that... That's not bad. I mean, it gave you, as you said, a gentle introduction, really, all getting back into work and having to do some bits different within uh, your lab. But I mean, a couple of weeks, that, that's a good good amount of time, really. You know, it could have been a lot longer, really. Oh, it could have been. Obviously, we do know some labs that have really been struggling. It's, mm. it's unfortunate. It's really, it is really bad. And obviously, you know, it's, it's, and obviously this we're not sure what what this will whether this no. this lockdown will make any difference. It seems to be less so in the dental industry. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. think it'll make any difference no. regarding no, I'm dental great work. Like dentists haven't got to close again now, yeah. um, and we can just keep going. I think it'll be a bit slower, like, yeah. it might feel like it was prior to first lockdown. But um, mm. I think as long as the work keeps flowing, like I said, yeah. being private, I think that helps massively. Um, yeah. We. Yeah, we we were in a practice. The reason why I say that it's good that it was only a couple of weeks, because obviously when the doors opened and practices could get back to work, not every practice did, which obviously could have a bigger knock on effect to you, because just because the dental world was getting back to some kind of normal. We were actually at a practice last month, I think, Carl, and we were told that one of their um, local practices still haven't opened. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, you yeah. know, that has a massive knock-on effect for you because obviously you rely on those practices opening, don't you? So. Yeah, that's it. I mean, go on, sorry, lads. And I think it was, it's good, obviously, if you need to restore an implant, they didn't need all that PPE, they didn't need all that, that gear that they had to wear. So it was obviously just taking an impression, sending the job, and obviously... That, or that, a scan. Yeah, or a scan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on message. Will, they're working on yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Stay on message. I think you've hit the nail on the head, isn't, isn't it, really? Because you're, you're looking at, if you've got to do a crown prep, for in the most cases, you're looking at the old AGP and fellow time, which Will and I and Kate are uh, experts We talk at. about sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> we've got to skip in a little bit. Um, and, and, you know, the, the practices have then had that knock-on effect of having to fellow that surgery for an hour or whatever time it was before yeah. they could go back in again. So obviously, I would have imagined they would have stacked up their crown preps for when they were hoping that yeah. horrible, you know, uh, aerosol <laughs> was going to get uh, less lethal and uh, they were going to be able to reduce their fellow times, which is obviously has come down now yeah. to uh, a more a more reasonable time. Yeah. Um, I don't want to go down this road. No. <laughs> so, no. Uh, so have you seen no, a sort of slow, slow increase in the um, number of non-implant cranes? Is that kind of been creeping up and creeping up and creeping up? Yeah. So your conventional yeah. cranes and and on lays and. Yeah, I think that took about four to six weeks. Then probably when that their tier dropped down, when yeah. you could, um, when the yeah, well, did they call it, it went from was it four to three yeah. or something Spectrum like that? Because they do. Yeah. 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 And that's when they started coming in. But now, right. now it's pretty much the same as what it was. Brilliant. It's good to hear. Yeah, so it's good. Yeah, because what one, one of the guys was sort of saying, it, it was difficult for him to prepare when he was dressed like a spaceman. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. You know, this is this is really hard for me to kind of do what I normally do when I've got all this stuff. I can't really see what I'm doing. So, yeah. You know, they were quite glad when it had dropped down because it, it was just it was a hindrance for yeah. for that doing your everyday work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. luckily, luckily for us in the lab, obviously, it's quite sort of isolated, so we only see mm. each there's, other. There's only four of us here. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it, we, we don't have the same issues that you guys have in surgery, which obviously, you know, the meeting people and all that sort of thing. So it is simpler and for us. Just a quick, I mean, talking about that and, and the issues and everything like that, the impressions that are coming in, I'm, I'm t are they sterilised 
before I know they are, but I'm just talking. So they sterilize before they come and you got, are you guys doing anything different with those sort of wet impressions? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. We also sterilize our end. Yeah. Probably sure. Obviously they are marked on the bags that are sterilized. But yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a prerequisite, isn't it? But that's another thing will, I guess that you could sort of tick in the box of yeah, sort of definitely. scanning. Um, yeah. yeah. You don't have to have the model once it's printed now. That's yeah. And, and, with, and, uh, and with scanners, do they have some sort of covering or they just have to be uh, disinfected? The tip, patients? tip is autoclavable on the TRIOS and That's, the ITERO, yeah, you've got, I think that was a disposable tip with a cover on top. And does the autoclave kill them, does it eventually? The, yeah, the, uh, the, the, I mean, it's a little tip. If you put a bit of gauze in um, right. over the mirror, that protects the mirror. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, they they wear out after a bit. They, I mean, it's it's going to, isn't it? You know, that temperature. Yeah. And that. But it's. Yeah, I mean, it's a couple of years, really. Yeah. So they've got a fairly decent shelf life, um, and they're not mass. The tips aren't massively expensive. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm I'm just on that diving board. I'm on about my second bounce. You yeah. Know, before. <laughs> yeah. Before I just go over. So you know. <laughs> And then it'll be a somersault, and I'll be I'll be all in, <laughs> and it'll all be digital. <laughs> it'll all be digital. I'll be a born again evangelical digital dentist. You're boring everybody. Be a proper Fabulous. digital nose. I want to take the opportunity because I know probably Danny and Steve probably won't, but I've got to say the service that DSD um, offer is seamless. Um, I did just say how patient you are, Steve. Danny, I'm not saying you're not, obviously. It's just, I spoke to Steve a lot more. But what you guys do, I mean, you know, the the relying that your the work's going to be back at the practice on time. And because Carl and I aren't in one practice all the time, it's sort of added pressure to make sure there's an individual there to make sure the work's back. But with DSD, it's just like a given. Yeah. it's just like it's dsd yeah. the work is going to be there your service really really is fantastic and i'm sure carl um will will second that yeah it's just yeah it's, it's superb i mean that you're not afraid to tell me when i've got it wrong <laughs> which is <laughs> which is great because that's what you need and, a, and we, have, we have that good thing say it, say it's it. definitely a good thing that technicians yeah. can do that yeah. it's, it's a good relationship which is fantastic yeah. and there's you been some on the phone some little things where we've struggled a little bit to, to get you the information. So you've kind of given us said, try this or try that. And, and, and it's really helped out. And we've, we've had uh, some quite complex cases uh, where, you know, your input has been invaluable in getting those cases sorted out. So yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've learned a lot from you guys. So thank you. No, I, I think it's basically, you just care about what you do. I think mm. care is a bulk of what, what we do. You mean we care what we send out the lab. We care about, Helping people, so yeah, and, and yeah. it shows. It shows. That's that's how we that's how we've always worked. It's, just, it's getting information. Sometimes you, you phone up companies like implant companies, and and they there's nobody to talk to. There's nobody who'll give you the info you want, and it's the most frustrating thing in the world when you try and you're trying to solve a problem because that's what we do. We're yeah. just solving issues, and you know what you want to be somebody when somebody asks you the question that you can answer. You give them the answer. Yeah. It's as simple as that, you know. I agree. Yeah. Well, it makes it easier for everybody, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we enjoy it. We, we, you oh, know, we, we, yeah. the, the last five years have, have absolutely flown by. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, like, so what, what do you think the next step is for you guys then? If it's five years doing this, you've gone from sort of you've seen the digital stuff take off, you've invested in the, the CAD CAM work and the printers um, and, and everything. Where, where, where are you guys going to go next, do you think? What's, what's, on, the, what's on the table? Well, we invested in, um, obviously we've got Implant Studio as well, so we design guides and stuff like that. We do, we are looking at another printer, a, a more, because obviously you can spend ridiculous money on these printers. Um, yeah. We're looking for, yeah, because we? obviously the, you get you get more digital impressions, you know, obviously it, it, it goes like that. You know, what, you what, are you, what are you going to do with a new printer? What's different about this one than the one you've got? Just It'll just be faster. Um, okay. That's the main thing, isn't it? Faster. Yeah, yeah. faster. And the resins, they are constantly yeah. evolving the resins, yeah. the temporary resins, and, and that, you know, the, the list of resins is growing. But again, it's one of those things where they put them in the marketplace and sort of they trial and error them a little bit. You know, it, it doesn't, nothing ever comes out of the box and it works. You have to sort of experiment with them. And that's yeah. You, you get the whatever new bit of kit it is. 
and you have to iron it out for a while before you realistically can can use yeah, it. Yeah, I know. You tell Will when he buys a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going back to the Nokia, I think. Ah! <laughs> the, the one with the little rubber casing, you know. Yeah. Good as gold. Why not, Will? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, boys, I'm, I'm, I've got to tell no you that, that's, yeah, that's 45 Blown minutes, by. guys. I know, I know, I know. But we've had it from Danny and Steve that they will come back Excellent. and hop on the panel. So I've got them to write it in blood. So that's it, boys. You're coming back. Committed. Seriously, anybody out there, do do not hesitate. Uh, really, really seriously, use these boys. They are fantastic, honestly. The communication, their work, their workflow, honestly, please use them. They are really, really good. And no, I don't work for them. <laughs> but they really, really are. They no, offer a fantastic service. We really appreciate that. And again, thanks for having us on. It's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, it was good Good talking to you guys. It's not a problem. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Everybody out there, thank you. It's going to get a bit colder, so Jackie Frost will no doubt make a visit. All have a fantastic weekend. Yeah, cheers, thank everybody. You thank you all. all. See you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.